So if there is no magic cutoff number that establishes whether or not an intervention is cost effective, but there's a range, and we have a pretty good idea where that range lies, in general, for a number of the decisions that we make in healthcare, then it's very interesting for us to discuss in society what is our maximal willingness to pay for different types of situations. So, for example, for rare cancers, rare diseases, versus very common diseases such as cholesterol lowering or hypertension. So we try to use uh, some of these decision rules and think about the quadrant when we're making decisions. So if the ICE are calculated of the new intervention really is below our ceiling ratio, so if something comes in below $50,000 per life year gained or per quality, it probably seems like a pretty good deal. But not always, because sometimes it might be for such a minor ailment or it might be another Me Too drug or agent for which we already have a myriad options, we may decide not to admit that new drug or that new device um, onto the formulary or as a benefit in our society if we have better ways to spend the resources. And if the ICER is way above our what we think is a reasonable threshold ICER or willingness to pay, then we will reject that new device or drug and not actually provide it as a benefit from the public dollar. Cost utility analysis. In cost utility analysis, again, it's just a special case of cost effectiveness analysis where we have calculated the delta E to be quality adjusted life years. Quality adjusted life years incorporates quality of life as well as quantity of life. The benefit here is that we're calculating a delta C per delta quality, and what we're doing is we're transforming all of the benefits and risks of the options, of the health options before us, into a common metric, a quality adjusted life year. So what is a quality? Well, qualities are weights that are based on measured preferences for different health states, and these are called utilities. So more desirable health states receive greater weights and will be favored in the analysis, whereas less desirable health states are given very low utilities. Utilities range from 0 to 1, where 0 is death and 1 is perfect health. And then the length of time that a patient uh, spends on average in that state of, of utility is multiplied um, by the life expectancy in that state of health. So life ex expectancy um, is multiplied by the quality of life rating, and these ratings come from either populations with that disease or from databases where we've already collected that data from um, with standard techniques, which we won't discuss here. So to make it easy, a quality then is utility times life years. So if you look at the graph here, you can imagine in the red area we have a um, disease, a person with a disease and they spend a short time at a perfect health but early in life their quality of life goes down. Um, due to the disease and they spend a number of years at that level and then they drop to a very low um, level of quality of health due to severe illness and then they somewhat recover. They spend a number of years that way and then they drop down again due to severe illness and um, up again a bit and then suddenly they die and their life is shortened by the disease. Imagine if we could invent a new drug or technology represented by the blue that gives you a longer length of life at perfect health. And even though you have decrements in health over time, it's less severe than what the natural state of the disease would have been. And in this case, the new technology even prolongs life. So what would be the quality? Well, it would be the utilities of each of these states multiplied by the length of life in each of these states. And the delta quality would be the blue area minus the red area. Here's another example of two different situations with 
um, utility as well as length of life graphed. And here we can calculate the qualities by adding up the utility times the length of life in that state. And there it is uh, for you as well. You can look at that and, and work it out and make sure you're able to calculate a quality. So these utilities, or um, sorry, these quality adjusted life years, then really they do have the benefits of, of being able to calculate a common metric with all of the benefits and risks amalgamated really into one um, type of unit. And because of that, we're able to, to compare incremental cost utility ratios across different programs, even if they don't have the same natural units as benefits. And that's really an advantage in a healthcare system when we want to maximize outcomes, is to look at incremental cost utility ratios. However, they do have their problems, which we won't cover in detail here for this quick overview. But one of the key problems is that there are other aspects that people care about that are not captured in a quality.